human. You've made it to my dimension. I'm very surprised and impressed. Is there something you seek, Traveler? You want to know me. There's a lot of documentation of me on Earth. Surely you must know that by now. You're interested in the Divine Warriors? Oh, I see. I can tell you about them. I gathered the most powerful warriors. Enki the Keeper from Golruk, Shad the Destroyer from Ruron, Esmond the Protector from... Menfia the Fury from... Kolzak the Wanderer from Ruan, and myself. All my friends were once humans, and they'd gained their relics from their ancestors. Except for me, I was born with mine. Then it transferred down to another human who currently roams the earth. I simply wanted to keep the world in balance, and I wanted my friends to remain by my side through all the journeys. And they did. Except for one man. He was different than me. He was fighting for the chaotic world, while I drove to stabilize the world however I could. Shad. I had fallen for a man against my nature. My emotions took control over my vessel, which doesn't happen often. It wasn't a sense to protect the warriors myself. It was a selfish feeling that grew onto my very being. But my sense of responsibility couldn't be torn even by my love. I still forced my hand through the fight, but it began to drain my scarce humanity. Esmond, that's your descent, correct? Garth Romave, you still carry his compassion and love. He's always looked out for me. Fought against Shad even though I had given up. You still follow his footsteps from your descendant. I have seen you, Garth. Thank you for still watching over me, even though I stopped trying. Oh, well, I didn't necessarily explain why I gave up. I grew numb from the fighting, and I stopped loving. I couldn't feel anything anymore. But... Enki, Esmond, and Kolzak decided to betray Shad and eliminate him from this world. I still don't understand why they did this, but my final conclusion was a self-centered one. You want to know anyways. Even though I knew Esmond and Shad loved me, I had a feeling the group loved me more than I could have understood when I had broken apart. And I predicted they'd done it for me. And now, after I've recovered, I feel an indescribable amount of guilt towards them. I knew that era was over, and I swore to myself I would watch over their descendants. But the effect of their actions created something even more terrifying that still haunts your world to this day. Shad. He became your so-called Shadow Lord. The darkness had consumed his vessel and he passed away. During the memorial, I felt more dead than he did. I wanted to cry, to show him how much I loved him, but naturally couldn't. I felt troubled. You'd stood behind me, your ruffled face, hands of yellow hair, shuffled with the earth, and helmet aside yourself. You hugged me so tight, held me to the same extent Shad did, but it was blazing compared to his foggy exterior. Your mouth rested against my shoulder and you cried. I felt so disoriented. I held you back in an attempt to comfort you. In between sobs you apologized, grief wrapped around your tongue, and you told me you did it for me. I knew it hurt everyone, but especially you and Kian's Kulzak suffered the most. There was no greater relationship than man to man. I'd never seen such bleeding sincerity before in you. I think... I think I started to feel my humanity restore. But I had never admitted so. Regardless, the Shadow Lord remained a dominant threat to Earth, and I knew what I had to do. I'd created a dimension. The one we are in right now. The one you've named the Irene Dimension. And fought him there away from civilization, and together, we were able to tear himself and his relic apart, 
disband them across the land so he couldn't ever threaten humanity again. We sealed away his soul to the nether, and the peace remained still. But I still remained unemotional. So, against my better judgment, I sealed away my memories and power to Irene's relic, as you named it, and languished, hoping I could regain my feelings again like I once had. And in safekeeping, I'd given my closest friend Hyra a staff, and when it glue, she'd place it somewhere where I could be of assistance, and your current brother, Vlad, came to Heria, hoping she could help with Phoenix Drop. And he furthermore placed the staff down outside the village, and I was reborn in another carcass. You already know Jessica, the descendant of me, the carrier of my relic. Hmm? What's with that expression? Did I say something wrong? Afmal. That's Jessica's name on Earth. I wonder why. Yes, I'm sure that's her real name. It's possible she could have forgotten when she first woke up in Phoenix Drop. But since I technically know her ancestors, I know what her name is. Oh, no, no, you misunderstand. I'm really her only relative by blood, but I named her Jessica, since I do think of her as a daughter to me, but I would never expect for her to remember this since she has no memory of ever being with me. How do I remember all this? Well, you see, I never expected to wake up again in a while. But when the time came, I wanted to have my own mind and body to live in. So I created a replica of my relic so I could still have my magic and memories. But I hid it somewhere nobody would ever be able to find it. So when Jessica was created, I prayed one day I could meet her and talk as if we were family. So, she still has my original relic, with all my memories and a limited amount of my power. And I have the one I'm currently using to speak with you. Do you want to sit for a moment? You can rest on my bed if you'd like. I'm sure this must be a lot for you to process. It's actually quite comfortable, and my favorite color. I'm not sure how wise it would be to remain here any longer. But, I don't mind if you ask me any more questions. Having some company is lovely once in a while. Thank you for finding me, Gothromave. 